Quasi, Gyasi, finally, finally, I have come around to taking up the challenge to react to the video that you requested. The history of the Ashanti kingdom of Ghana. All right. Thank you so much for the recommendation. I have not been putting up the comments on the videos recently. It's not because I can't. It's just because there's just so many that I get overwhelmed and sometimes I don't see them. So please forgive me. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the channel. My name is Kamga. On this channel, we'll do SS reviews and reactions. And so far, maybe you've come to the channel because you saw my video on the Ethiopian reactions that I've been making. I am discovering so much about the African continent. I've done a bunch of Geography Now videos and there's so much more coming up. I still feel like I'm still discovering the kind of videos that I like to react to, my kind of reaction styles. I know I interrupt a lot. I try not to, but I'm curious. Sometimes things pop up and I can't help it. I just stop the video. Anyway, today we're doing History of the Ashanti Empire, Ghana, Africa by Epimetheus. And let me see here. It's it's a combination between Epimetheus and somebody else. But hey, it's 200 something thousand subscribers views, uh, 400,000 subscribers it was done in 2018. So the usual disclaimers. Go watch the videos on the channel themselves if you don't like me interrupting. Secondly, keep in mind that making the summary of any country, any culture, any nation takes a lot. So yes, they're going to get things wrong. However, I'm always open to having you in the comment section share with me, you know, if there was some, some gross miscalculation, some terrible misconception or something that is just an utter, you know, a lie or just untrue, unfactual. Leave a comment. Let's share. Let's learn together. and Let's grow. And um, yeah, without much ado, let's get straight right into the video. Hey, this is Epimetheus. This video is a collaboration between the fantastic YouTube channel From Nothing and I. Having first watched many of Jabari's videos over on the From Nothing channel several months ago, that really motivated me to start researching more about Sub-Saharan African history and make a couple videos on the subject. After this video, be sure to head over to his channel, subscribe, and leave lots of likes. I am sure you will find the subject matter as fascinating as I did. And now, the history of the Ashanti. The Ashanti Kingdom was a West African state that at its greatest extent ruled over an area that roughly corresponds to the modern day country of Ghana between the years of 1640 and 1902. The success of the Ashanti was due to their ability to rapidly adapt and innovate, including- They had guns in those days? I'm sorry, I've already started interrupting. I'm just- Wow. How little do I know about history of warfare? I don't even know it. 1640s, 1902s, I mean 1902s, not that far. Gunpowder was probably invented way before that. Or was it? I don't even know. During the early adoption of the success of the Ashanti was due to their ability to rapidly adapt and innovate, including the early adoption of European firearms. Oh, of course. The region that would become the Ashanti Empire was inhabited by several unique human populations since as early as 150,000 years before present, including the Sangoan culture, and later on, the Kintampo complex, a collection of diverse villages that are credited with spreading sedentary lifestyles to the region, where they bred livestock and farmed local crops. After they abandoned the region around 2700 years before present, a new population would replace them, a population of people that are widely accepted by DNA analysis to be the ancestors of much of Ghana's modern day population. The largest waves of migration are believed to have taken place between the 11th and 15th centuries CE. Among the largest of these populations are the Akan, who make up 48% of Ghana's modern day population, hmm. as well as 41% of the population of the Ivory Coast. They founded a series of states throughout the medieval and pre-modern era, with the oldest one being the Bonoman Kingdom, which was located in the northern region of what is now modern day Ghana, established by a group of migrants who fled from the Empire of Ghana, as it became increasingly consumed by Islamic influence. Not to be confused with the modern day nation of Ghana, which exists in a totally different region than the ancient empire of Ghana. So they moved From the around. kingdom of Bonoman, several waves of Akan people branched out and formed smaller states in what would eventually become the Kwaman clan state. Established roughly around 1600 CE, the Kwaman clan state was a collection of small Akan communities, which slowly but surely became increasingly more centralized before eventually evolving into several small kingdoms. One of these states known as Dinchira, founded in 1620, had the upper hand seeing as they controlled most of the region's gold mines and thus grew very wealthy through trade in the metal. Of course. With the power and wealth generated from these gold mines, the Dinchira established aggressive tributary status over the surrounding Akan states. One of these tributary states was Kumasiman, founded in 1640, the predecessor of the Ashanti Kingdom. Oh. Fed up with the oppression his kingdom faced from the Dinchira, 
King Osei-Tutu summoned a spiritual leader, Anochi Okumpo, to his palace to request assistance with a war that he planned to wage on the Dinchira. According to legend, Anochi Okumpo received a golden stool from the heavens, given to him by Niame, the supreme creator in the Akan religion. For use as a Dang, I love I love when it goes into mythology. I'm always fascinated by Greek mythology and I haven't done much recent Egyptian mythology. So many books I need to read. But whenever I see African mythology, I get excited because I get a chance to learn about our own mythology, you know, like a stool given by the heavens. Let me let me back that up a little bit. Hey, if you if you love books, uh, if you can recommend a book that has a lot of African, Egyptian, whatever mythology, I'm very much interested in learning more about, you know, mythology. I think Anansi, they'll probably mention Anansi, the spider, spider, the wise, you know, the wily, crafty god, uh, African god. So I sound so American, like I'm trying to explore a culture that is mine. Jesus Christ. To wage on the Dinchira, Anochi Okumpo to his palace to request Dinchira, the predecessor of the Ashanti kingdom. Fed up with the oppression his kingdom faced from the Dinchira, King Osei Tutu summoned a spiritual leader. Anochi Okumpo to his palace to request assistance with a war that he planned to wage on the Dinchira. According to legend, Anochi Okumpo received a golden stool from the heavens, given to him by Niame, the supreme creator in the Akan religion, for use as a symbol of unity of all of the other surrounding Akan kingdoms that were under Dinchira dominion. After a confederation was established, Osei Tutu led several small detachments of his army to war against the Dinchira kingdom's forces, whom were led by the ruler Ntim Yakari. Gakari's forces managed to drive the small Ashanti forces out of the cities of Adunku, Abontim, and Aputu Goya, probably butchered those names, which was Osei Tutu's plan all along, as their main body planned to catch Gakari's forces off guard and defeat them in the Battle of Eyase. After decisively defeating the Dinchira and establishing their independence in 1701, the Ashanti reigned supreme as the largest and most powerful state to ever exist in the region, until its eventual British rule. Ah, uh, Ashanti... of course, British rule. Of course, that's what ends empires. Jesus. He began trading with the Europeans that ever exist in the region until its eventual British rule. The Ashanti began trading with the Europeans as early as the 15th century. After conquering the Achim, Akwamu, Wasa, and other small coastal kingdoms, they gained a full monopoly on European goods between the 18th and 19th centuries, where they traded gold, ivory, and slaves to European merchants for Dane guns becoming one of the few large West African states at the time to have an army completely equipped with firearms. The Fon Kingdom to the east, most famously known for their special corps of female warriors, still struggled against the Ashanti in numerous wars, despite also having an army fully equipped with firearms. Is it possible that the Dora Milaje were inspired by these female warriors? Hmm, Fon Kingdom, Dahomey. The Kingdom of Achim to the south was also famously known for their special corps of with firearms. The Fon Kingdom to the east, most famously known for their special corps of female warriors, still struggled against the Ashanti in numerous wars, despite also having an army fully equipped with firearms. The Kingdom of Achim to the south was also growing increasingly less tolerant of Ashanti rule, which the Ashanti king at the time, Kusi Obodum, was largely criticized for ignoring. His aversion to the problem opened the door to the Achim and Dahomey establishing contact with one another, when they established an alliance which was also assisted by the Yoruba Kingdom of Oyo to the east another powerful West African kingdom known for its cavalry that existed in what is now modern-day Nigeria, who had conquered the Dahomey just 16 years prior Ooh. in 1748, despite lacking firearms in its imperial army. Is... This triple alliance of Oyo, Achim, and Dahomey warriors ambushed a large force of 12,000 Ashanti in 1764, inflicting a devastating and embarrassing defeat on them in the Battle of Atakpame. Kusi Obodum was immediately deposed for his negligence and replaced by more youthful ruler Osei Kwadwo, who reigned between the years of 1764 and 1777. Determined to do better than his predecessor, he withdrew all interest from the Kingdom of Dahomey. He took the throne after the belligerent Triple Alliance was dismantled and demonstrated excellent diplomacy with the Fanti and Dinchira, while taking full advantage of rivalries between the Wasa and Achim kingdoms. The Fonti, on the other hand, remained suspicious of the Ashanti's true intentions, as it seemed their relations were fueled by ambitions to establish direct control over their coastal trade and European firearms. Relations between the Fonti states and the Ashanti were always complex and awkward, until it finally manifested into full-on hostility in the year 1806, when the Fonti safely harbored a group of fugitives accused by the Ashanti of robbing graves. Hmm? The Fonti refused to hand them over, which led to the Ashanti-Fonti War, a long conflict between the two groups that finally ended in 1824 
when Osei Bansu's forces conquered all Fonti states. The same year, the Shanti also defeated a British force as they had protectorate status over the Fonti with the obligation to protect the interests of the Fonti from enemies. After the victory over the British, the two kingdoms signed a treaty of peace in 1831, which lasted for the next 30 years. During this time, the British were shocked at the sophistication of the Ashanti Kingdom and reacted with disbelief when traveler and writer Thomas Bowditch described indoor plumbing, vast road systems, and highly complex judiciary and governing systems. The Ashanti even had a system of hieroglyphics known as Adinkra. You know, there's a video that I'm going to make on the channel, I just want to mention this now. Um, I think the video is, called, is titled, let me see if I can find it real quick. The greatest lie ever told about Africans. I haven't watched the video yet, but I think the video has to do with the misconceptions that people had or have about the continent. Maybe before um, we had European, you know, Western explorers, colonizers writing all these accounts of their explorations and what they found out. And what this, what, what you said about, you know, this, who was it, Alexander, something, this person, explorer person who came down and said, what? Indoor plumbing and judiciary? Dude, we had, we have, and I feel like, maybe this is all Pan-African, but I feel like, I don't want to believe that a whole continent, the dark continent, that people survived by being primitive and not taking care of themselves and not having community and not having systems. I feel like we undermine our own science and technology and method of ruling because the other method seems to, I don't know, I don't even know, I'm still up my, I don't, I don't understand if it's just that we, we don't see our own value or we didn't see our value. And then now because of the way our ancestors and the previous people reacted, we have this genetic predisposition <laughs> to believe that any method that is from the other side is better than ours. So I'm looking forward to doing that video, that uh, reaction to that particular video and learning more about those lies that we are not even aware of about our own country, you know? So yeah, we'll see. And continent, I mean, continent, not country. So, yeah. The area of the sophistication of the Ashanti for the next 30 years. During this time, the British were shocked at the sophistication of the Ashanti kingdom and reacted with disbelief when traveler and writer Thomas Bowditch described indoor plumbing, vast road systems, and highly complex judiciary and governing systems. The Ashanti even had a system of hieroglyphics known as Adinkra. In 1864, hostilities would once again reignite. A territorial dispute arose when the Ashanti took control of the coastal towns once more. A British force was dispatched five years later and reconquered the city of Elmina, located on the coast of the Ashanti Elmina. territory. They followed up with another force in 1874, where Sir Garnet Walsley led an army into Kumasi, the capital of Imperial Ashanti. Kumasi. After the capture of the city, both the Ashanti and the British had underestimated one another, and not just militarily. The British were surprised at the sophistication of Ashanti architecture, government, and infrastructure, while the Ashanti were surprised by the overwhelming technological superiority of the British. The British claimed these newly captured southern provinces of the Ashanti Kingdom for the British Gold Coast Colony. After the news of this defeat spread to the northern regions of the empire, numerous states began to rebel, leading to internal conflict and strife, allowing the British to make quick work of the Ashanti over the next few decades. After the Ashanti declined... Whenever this is a thing like and this is this is a clear example whether it's family whether it's business whether it's startup whether it's friendship once you're divided the enemy can take over and this is a clear example it's annoying me actually allowing the british to make the british gold coast colony after the news of this defeat spread to the northern regions of the empire numerous states began to rebel leading to internal conflict and strife, allowing the British to make quick work of the Ashanti over the next few decades. After the Ashanti declined an official request of protectorate status by the British, they marched their army into the Ashanti Kingdom and assimilated them into a protectorate anyway, utilizing newly developed military technology such as repeating rifles, rocket artillery, and Gatling guns, and burning Kumasi to the ground in 1896. In 1902, one last valiant uprising was led by warrior queen Ya Asantewa, who sought to protect the golden oh. stool. As the British knew of its significance and sought to capture it as a means of crushing the Ashanti people's sense of unity once and for all. Despite heavy casualties on both sides, she was successful in protecting the stool, which can still be observed in Ghana today. Thank God. However, 
This war resulted in the full subjugation of the Kingdom of Ashanti in the British Gold Coast. In 1935, the Ashanti Kingdom was re-established where it still exists to present day on a sub-national level in modern-day Ghana. Thanks Jabari, and be sure everyone to go over to his channel, link at the top of the description, and subscribe, leave lots of likes, and check out a bunch of those videos. And a huge thanks to my patrons over on Patreon for as little as a buck a month you can help improve this channel, which is like less than a third of the price of a cup of coffee. And if not, you can still help by leaving a comment, liking, and subscribing. Definitely thanks so much. liking and subscribing. Definitely liking and subscribing. You know, I I like doing reactions to videos that I haven't watched because I want to discover the content and then find myself reacting in real time. And this particular video, for some reason, Gassi, I don't know what you expect me to get from this video, but it's actually making me upset about the way our history and the mistakes that we've made and the way we fought against each other and lost so much because of greed, because of personal interests. And I feel like history, you know, history repeats itself. It's like, if we don't learn from this, then we end up doing the same thing over and over centuries at infinitum. And it sort of reminds me of some of the comments that I have on the video, the Ethiopia, Ethiopians and Africans video that I did, the reaction that I did where people kept saying, you know, this is how they come and divide us. This is how they say things to separate us. And for me, I was like, oh, yeah, it's a comment. But then now I understand a lot better about the perspective of if we are not united, it's easy for someone to come in and break us apart. And look at the Shanti Kingdom. Like, they left from, look at, like, seriously, look at, look at something. Let me just show you where, where, what that was. They left from the job huge space, get the, job. the huge landmass to, like, you know, subnational level. That is That is so... Man, it's, can you believe that? Like, how long ago was that? How long ago did they actually have, um, and what the ads are playing, so I'm just letting them play in the background. I feel, I, maybe it's because I'm also tired. I'm <laughs> doing a lot of work today. But I feel like it could have been, let me see if I can find that space. We can see, like, from where they were to, like, I mean, look at this. Look, look at, look at, look at this is, this red was supposed to be there. This is where they were at some point in time. Like literally all this place, the whole place. And then look at where they ended up now. Look at that. Look at, look at this is it. This is all that left from all that was there. All that history, all that. <sighs> I feel sad a little bit. Not just a little bit, I just... The idea that, you know, you, you have all this power, you have this land and this space. So just to give us individuals, let me say you have a, a job that allows you to make a lot of money right now, right? And then you get arrogant, you get greedy, you get, you forget the humility of starting from scratch. You forget the, 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 the strength of collaboration, the power of a community. And then it gets stripped away. I feel like this is a, the Ashanti Empire, the progression the battles, the conflict, the strife, and then now to where it is. I, I, I hope we can learn from this and really inculcate these ideas in the way we move forward as Africans, even as a global community, because if you have less fights, I mean, I'm not trying to be pollyanna here, but think about this. If we had less wars, less conflicts, we'd probably be able to solve a bunch of problems that the world really needs us to work on. So I'm just saying, you know, we, we talk about, oh, you're from this tribe, oh, you're from this place, you're from this, we separate ourselves, and then the enemy comes in. So, yeah, I think I think this was a sobering um, video for me to watch and learn. Gassi, you wanted me to do this. I hope you're satisfied. If not, let me know in the comment section if you're not. But I did learn, and I had no idea about how large the Ashanti occupied the space was before, you know, what it is now. Yeah, maybe there's another video that I might actually want to watch that is different. But I thought the animation was a little bit, I mean, I can't even do it. And I'm already trying to compare and review it. But it was it was somewhat 
static for me. I'm very visual, so I wish they would put some of those names on the screen as he was reading them. I could not. I, I remember things from like, I'm, I'm very visual. So I remember what I see, not what I hear, which explains why I'm always arguing with people anyway. But yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. My name is Kamga. I am Cameroonian on this channel. I do SS reviews and reactions. And every Friday, I do a live stream right here on the channel where we can, you know, connect. You can even jump in the conversation if you want. And uh, yeah, if you would like to support the channel, there's a Patreon link, of course, in the description, in the first comment. You can find it there and you can go on ahead and support this channel to help get some stuff for the channel, like to get a new camera, actually. And I'm thinking about it. I've been thinking about it for months. But yeah. And if you can't support the channel through Patreon, that's totally fine. You can join and become a member of the channel or you can just like and subscribe. That is enough. And you can share with a Ghanaian friend to uh, come and give a comment and tell me, hey, Kamga, you have no idea what you're doing. Stop doing these videos. And which I will respond like, hey, thank you so much for watching the video. Thanks for the comment. You're helping me out here. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, you do your best. Let God take care of the rest. And while there's life, there is hope. Thank you so much for your time. You take care, my friend.